Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I thought I would chat you through how to rent a property in the UK. Um, so I've done a couple of how to rent guides with like tips and tricks and rights and responsibilities. But I thought I'd give you like a step by step breakdown of how to rent a property in the UK. Um, I've had a couple of comments on my other videos asking this question so I thought it best to just kind of film a, as I said, step by step guide on how to rent a house or a flat in the UK. So the first thing that you need to do is work out your affordability. So you need to work out how much rent you can afford um, before you look for a flat because it's no good falling in love with a flat or a house that you can't actually afford. Um, so when I'm talking about affordability, I don't just mean how much your rent is. I mean taking into consideration any bills you already have. So phone bills, if you've got any repayments on any credit, um, if you've got a car, things like that. And then look at how much disposable income you have after that and work out how much you're happy to pay on rent and bills, etc. The general rule of thumb is that your rent should make up no more than 30% um, of your take-home pay. So, for example, if your take-home pay is like £1,200, your rent should be no, long, no more than £400 a month. Um, which is obviously quite unrealistic in the current world but for example if you're like me and you're sharing um your living space with another person so whether or not you're being a roommate or you're living with your partner your half of the rent and your half of the bills etc work it out that way or you can combine your salaries and work it out overall and kind of get into the logistics of who pays for what at a later date because that is a conversation and a half isn't it babe uh -huh. um so the next thing that you do is you get your backside onto one of the various um property search engines such as zoopla right move on the market or an independent estate agent um and you have a look at some flats or some houses you give them what your budget is they sometimes will go away and come back with things if there's nothing on the market right now or if you see something on the market you're interested in, then usually there'll be a kind of contact us bit that you, where you can email the estate agent directly and arrange a viewing. Now in COVID times, some of these viewings are being done over video. Um, that is a bit tricky. Bear that in mind that things on video are not always the same in person. Um, so kind of be mindful of that before you set your heart on a flat. that looks amazing in video, but you've not actually seen in person. Um, so once you've had a look at a few flats, you've asked all your normal questions that you need to ask, which I've spoke about in a previous video, um, such as, is it is the mortgage paid? Um, who is the landlord? Are they a single person? Are they a company? Do they live locally? Blah, blah, blah. Um, once you've kind of fallen in love with one, then that's when you get to the point where you put your offer in. So when you put an offer in, they usually will ask you for a deposit, which is, I think it's no more than five weeks rent. Yeah, I'm looking for confirmation over there, although she's not got a clue what I'm talking about. So, um, as far, yeah, it's five weeks rent or it's capped at a certain amount. Um, you put that deposit down. It is worth noting that when you, oh no, I'm lying. I'm lying. I've Why got myself confused. Lying? I'm lying. I'm lying. Um, so what they'll actually ask you to put down is a holding fee, which is one week's rent. Um, so that amount will be clearly displayed to you. And then when you pay your final deposit, which is your five weeks rent plus your first month's rent, they'll deduct that off or they can just take it off your next month's rent. They'll give you go through all of the options with you then. Um, so yeah, you put your offer in, you give them the holding fee, which is one week's rent, and then they will ask you to do a reference check. So typically this is done externally by a referencing agency. They'll send you all the paperwork via email, usually and then you fill that out send it off they do their references jobs are good in um so the things that they'll reference if you're an existing tenant they will um get reference from your previous estate agent if you're not then they'll ask i think it's for a character reference and for a job reference just to make sure that you're actually employed where you say you're employed and you're earning the amount that you're say that you that you're earning and they also do a credit check on you um I'm not sure what the limit is for what your credit score needs to be to rent a property, um, but I don't know of anybody that has been rejected for a rental property based off a credit check. So 
I imagine you need to be in a pretty dire situation where you can't actually afford to rent in order to be rejected. Um, so yeah, don't worry too much about that. Um, so once you've done that and they've sent your references off, um, you get a decision from the landlord whether or not they're happy for you to live in their property. Um, if they say no, and it's because you failed your reference and credit check, you do not get that holding fee back. If you pull out of the rental property, you change your mind, you found somewhere else, you do not get that rental that deposit back. If the landlord changes their mind and they go, actually, I don't want to rent my property anymore, I want to keep it for myself, then you'll get that holding fee back. That's the only circumstance that I know of where you'll get that money back. Um, so once you've done your references and everything and it's all green light, go, 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 that is when you look at the contract. So you sign your contract, you typically need to take two forms of ID, so it'd be um, photo ID and then it would also be a copy of a utility bill to prove your current address um, or like a, a bank statement, something that has your address and your name on it. Um, so you take those in when you sign your contract, sign, 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 make sure you read your contract properly. Um, Generally, they're not going to try and be dodgy with it if they're a reputable estate agent, but just be careful. Um, check for any clauses that they've put in extra. So, for example, in this place, they put a break clause in, um, which is a whole other thing that I will discuss in another video. Um, but make sure that you're aware of those clauses that they've put in and any extra things in regards to decor decorating or furniture, if there's furniture already in there, things like that. Um, so you sign your contract and then that's when you get your move-in date. So that's the date you're going to get the keys and you're going to do your check-in. So typically, obviously if you're moving from one, one rental property to another, you've got to take into account your four weeks notice, um, which is four weeks from your rental pay day. So it's not just if you decide to move in the middle of the month, you can just do whenever. Typically it's from the date you pay rent. So if you pay your rent on the 1st of August every month, 1st of August every month, that makes sense. The 1st of every month, you have to hand your notice in on like the 1st of August or the 1st of September and it's four weeks from then. Um, so you kind of get all that smoothed out with regards to your moving day and then on the day, it varies. We've had two different experiences. Um, so with our old property, we met the inventory clerk at the property. They spoke um, to us, talked us through the entire property, which came in very handy later on because I had recorded it. Um, so he spoke us through everything, showed us where the electricity meter was and all of that, um, gave us the keys and off he went and the flat was ours. The other way that it has been done is we actually went and picked up the keys ourselves from the estate agents and let ourselves in and the inventory clerk had already been round before us and it was all done online. I'm not sure if that was a COVID protocol or whether or not that's just how that particular managing agent does things. So there are a couple of ways that they can do the inventory. Um, and yeah, once you've got your keys, it's a case of changing everything over into the correct name. Um, so after you've been there kind of three or four weeks, the property management team should have notified all of the utilities um, that you are the new tenant and this is your name. And then they will send you out a letter saying, hello, new tenant. You need to set up your water bill, you need to set up your electricity bill, blah, blah, blah. And then you just contact it. It's really easy. And trust me, no one is going to be billed for the wrong thing. Um, for example, you won't get billed for the previous person's bill because it's not yours and the estate agent will take hand of that. Um, and equally, you're not going to get away with them paying for yours either. So don't try it. It's not worth it. Um, yeah, so once you're in, you're in and you can kind of relax. Um, yeah, that was a kind of whistle stop tour into the step by steps of renting a property. Um, don't think I've missed anything, but as always, I am no rental expert. I don't work for an estate agent. This is purely from my own research and from my own experiences. So if there is anything I missed or anything you don't think is quite right, pop a comment below um, just for other people's information. And let me know if you've had any experiences with renting properties, if you had any rental disasters or anything that went really well or anything that you think might be helpful for other people, pop it all below and I will speak to you next time. Bye bye.